Well, I'm here on the OSU campus in Stillwater to give you a brief rundown of the variety of oaks that will grow in our state. Now, oaks in general are very long-lived trees. They usually are symbolic of a very tough, durable tree. Oaks are usually divided into two different groups, the white oaks and the red oaks. The white oaks are usually characteristic of a round lobed leaf and the red oaks usually have what we call a bristle tipped leaf. And so that's an easy way to distinguish the two major groups of oaks. Now oaks have gone way back in history so far as being trees that are useful to man. And the white oak group in general was highly prized for shipbuilding. In fact, in the 18th century, the English wanted to buy the state of Florida, what, used to, what now is the state of Florida, for their many stands of native white oak because that would be good for shipbuilding. And in fact, over in Europe, their oak forests were highly prized for the acorns that the forest produced because the acorns were good food for pigs. And the value of an orchard was based on how many pigs that oak orchard would support. So oaks go way back in history. Well, the first oak I want to show you is the bur oak. This is the one behind me here. It becomes a very large tree. Being a member of the white oak family, it does have rounded lobes. And these are the acorns from the bur oak. Very, very large. In fact, they're the largest acorns produced by any oaks. Now, the bur oak will grow most anywhere in Oklahoma. So that's the first one I wanted to start off with you. If you live out by Woodward and you want to grow an oak tree, try to find a bur oak because it will take wind, drought, tight soil conditions, most anything. It's a very, very tough tree. It's one that you might want to try. Now, if you're limited in landscape space, I would avoid it because it does get very large. And among the oaks, it's what we call a very coarse textured oak. It has very, very large leaves compared to most oaks. And the bark is rather rough as well. And occasionally, these acorns can be kind of a nuisance if you walk around barefoot under your oak trees. Let's go look at another oak, the true white oak, and see how it compares with the bur oak. The true white oak is beautiful compared to a lot of other members of the white oak family. The white oak has very deeply lobed leaves and beautiful fall color, very orangey. Now being a white oak, it does not have the bristles on the tips, but the leaves themselves almost look like members of the red oak family because they are so deeply lobed. One distinction, however, is that the white oak retains its leaves through the winter time. If you're planting it on the south side of your house and hoping for some warm winter sun, you may not get it because the leaves will stay on all winter and the dropping foliage in late winter can continue to be a nuisance. And the white oak has very, very horizontal branch habits. So if you want a big tree that your grandchildren can play in to read storybooks or whatever, it'll be great for that because of the horizontal branching. It is not well suited to very tight locations in the landscape because it is going to get big. It's a great park or a state tree. Very, very tough wooded, very insect resistant. It does, however, need plenty of moisture. It's native to the eastern United States. So you don't want to plant it out someplace where you're not willing to care for it. It needs plenty of water and moisture to grow well. But the white oak is a beautiful member of the white oak group of oaks. As with the white oak we just looked at, this swamp white oak also retains its leaves through the winter time. So if you want that type of appearance in the landscape, that's fine, although not everyone likes that in oaks. Now the swamp white oak is often confused with the bur oak because the caps on the acorns come down over the side of the acorn. However, if you compare the swamp white oak acorn with the bur oak acorn, there's quite a difference in size. Now, the swamp white oak also requires very wet soil conditions. It's native to the swamps of southeast U.S. So you wouldn't want to confuse it with the bur oak. It's not nearly so drought tolerant. It needs moist conditions to grow well. But it is very, very tough wooded, and it's a good tree in that respect. But if you're going to plant one, you live in central Oklahoma, beware that it'd be a good idea to mulch it and make sure it gets plenty of moisture. It does have nice shaped leaves, however, and the bark is fairly pretty as white oaks go. This tree probably epitomizes the group of red oaks, also known as the group of black oaks. This behind me is the northern red oak. 
It's well adapted to Oklahoma from central Oklahoma on east. It loves a deep, fertile soil, usually found in low, woodsy, swampy areas. It will not tolerate a very heavy clay, but it does love plenty of fertilizer, moisture, heavy mulch. It's a fast grower, and as you can see, it has beautiful red fall color. Now, the group of red oaks are different than the white oaks. I mentioned earlier they have bristle-tipped leaves. Also, their acorns are a little different. White oaks will drop their acorns annually, and their acorns are rather sweet tasting. The red and black oak group only drops their acorns every other year, and they're very bitter tasting. So that's one way to distinguish the two groups also. But this northern red oak is an excellent tree to have in the landscape. The bark is a nice dark black, fairly fine textured, and the foliage is just beautiful in the fall. Now, if you have a heavy clay soil, you might consider an alternative to the northern red oak, and that's the Schumert oak. In the nursery trade, the two names are almost used interchangeably. However, they are two different species of trees. The Schumert oak will take a heavy clay soil, and it will tolerate urban sites a little bit better, such as areas where a curb and a sidewalk is between the tree, or on, on either sides of the tree. It will tolerate that site very, very well. But both trees are beautiful members of the red oak group. This live oak is typical of how they'll grow in the still water area. They aren't adapted out on the prairie where we have strong winds and hot, dry conditions in the summertime. The live oak is typically a southern tree. So for those of you who live down in LaFleur County in southeast Oklahoma, the live oak is for you. Now along the Gulf Coast, those trees will live a couple of hundred years and get huge. In southern Oklahoma, they will get fairly large. And if you want to grow a live oak, this far north or west, you must consider it just a specimen tree because they will not grow very large. But the live oak is an evergreen oak. It has beautiful, deep, glossy green foliage that's very leathery and a light fuzzy green on the back side. The live oak is very, very insect and disease resistant, so it's a good choice in that respect. But do use care. It's not adapted to all places in Oklahoma. Now this next tree doesn't even look like an oak. This is the sawtooth oak. And the sawtooth oak has very long, narrow leaves, and the tips of the leaves have little bristles on them, hence the name sawtooth oak. Now, it is a very, very fast-growing tree. It's native to Korea, Japan, and China. And it has not been grown in Oklahoma for very long, so we're not sure how long it will live here. This tree behind me is about 10 years old, and as oaks go, it's grown very, very quickly. This nice yellow fall color. It's a good choice for disturbed sites such as this on a college campus with a sidewalk on either side. It seems to be growing just fine. But it might be a good choice if you want a finer texture and less of an oak appearance, but the toughness and durability of the oak family. Next, I want to show you a water oak growing down near Theta Pond. Now, if you want an oak with small leaves, but you're too far out of range to successfully grow a live oak, you might try the water oak. Water oak has a little bit larger leaves, but they are still small relative to most oaks. Very broad at the tip, rounded at the top of the leaf. Now, they're fairly fast growing. and For this reason, among oaks, the water oak's very weak wooded. If you want it to be a stronger wooded tree, though, Hold back on the water and the fertilizer, let it grow a little slower, and it will be a stronger tree. This will grow to be a very large tree, very spreading. And in the southern part of the United States, it's nearly evergreen. And in Oklahoma, as you can see, we're shooting in November, the tree is still a deep green. And the leaves stay green until midwinter, then they turn brown and fall off. And so you don't get much fall color with it, but it is practically evergreen, especially in the southern part of Oklahoma. It's a good one to grow. One last oak I want to mention that we didn't have one here on campus to show you is the willow oak. The leaves look almost just like a willow tree. It, like the other red oak groups, will drop their, drop their leaves in the fall. They won't hold on to them all winter long, which is a nice feature. And the willow oak has very fine textured foliage and fine branching. It's one that you might want to check out at your local nursery. With all the oaks, you still have time to plant them this fall particularly the container-grown ones. 
It's a great time to see their color and see how they'll fit into your landscape.